Uh, blessing, shalom, fam. This is Crystal from God's Kingdom um, Counselor. Um, the Lord kept me up until like 2 o'clock this morning. Um, and he was revealing to me about um, talents. That's coming from Matthew 25, 14 through 13. I'm um, sorry if I'm looking down. I just have notes and then I have scriptures beside me. So um, I'm going to say that um, there was... Um, I should say a person that reached out yesterday through um, the God's the, the, the counseling so um, last night um, I was just praying in the spirit and just thanking Lord for bringing this person to me now um, the Lord was revealing it to me that if I didn't step out the first time like when he showed me to to do to give words if I didn't step out then if I didn't step out when um, he showed me to do the counseling thing this person would have missed me this person would have never reached out this person would have never got any um, guidance or any help or even just to be a friend too and this is why it's so important when God calls us that we need to be obedient and step out. Now, um, I'm just going to read through my notes because I thought that they were super important. I really, really don't want to miss any of them. So I'm just going to read, okay? And it says, talents could be anything, whatever God is calling you to do. It could be more than one. It could be five or it could be ten. The Lord brought to me that if I didn't step out on, on the water for what he has called me to do to release the words that he has given me through dreams, visions, or whatever else that he is um, leading me to, to do, or being a counselor for God's kingdom, I would be missing souls that are called on my behalf. Um, that is that is deep if you just think about it for a second, that we are accountable for, for other people. This is what God is meaning by talents. To not hide them. God sends souls to us. The ones that are aligned to us. If we don't step out. How can souls be helped or be saved? They can't. Um, yes God is there for us. But we are as humans. That we all need physical. Um, uh, touch or feeling interaction. So this is why too. God uses us for such. For, for his glory. Right? So. We are not to be ignorant and hide whatever God gives us. Um, if we do not use them, God will give them to what we have and he will give them to another. Just like it says in Matthew 25, 14 through 11 about the talents. We are not just called to the unsaved, but like Jesus says, if we fall, that we are to go after the, the one that fell. You know, the speaking from the 99, that comes from Luke 15, 3 through 7, and I'm going to read that um, as well. Um... Yeah, so I'm just going to use myself as an example. So, sorry my hair. After I got saved, God put me through the wilderness. Now, um, I was all alone. I didn't have no friends, no family that I could actually talk to, to be there to comfort me, to show me, help lead me and guide me. Um, God put this one person in my path. This person texted me all the time. Um, this person was actually halfway across the world. They were in England. Now, if God didn't put this person in my path, I don't know where I would be because um, I had to go through extreme battles, through trials and tribbles, tri tribulations. And honestly, I don't know where I would be if that person wasn't there in my path to help me get through these things. I, I really, really don't know what I would, would have done. And I understand now because when I was in a safe place where God needed me to be, he this person said that they were moving on forward they were going somewhere else and I didn't understand why this friend didn't this person didn't want to be my friend anymore it was now I understand was because it was just an assignment when God calls us it's it's for a, a time you know there's time for everything so and that's what he was revealing to me also if we are saved and God puts you through the wilderness it's it's for to help set free um sorry my hair um our bloodline so our family sh could or not have gone through it if they didn't go through it and God chooses us to set our bloodline free we will have to endure things but we have to be obedient and stick through it and and don't give up so um God can make you go through little bat little battles he can go make you go through medium battles or extreme battles whatever God would not give us anything more than we could ever 
bear. So he knows what we can endure and what we can't. So like, like it's, it's so many people say that God gives his strongest soldiers the hardest battle. So there's always a reason for something. So don't neglect what God gives you. Um, sorry here, one more. And we don't want to forfeit that person uh, God assigned us. Um, we are accountable for each person, um, for their souls. Um, so if you say you didn't want to step out here and you didn't want to step out there and that person needed your help and you weren't there, you know, that's, that's their soul being on the line on, on your behalf. To me, that touched me deep to my core. Like we are accountable for other people. It's not just for ourselves. We can't be ignorant that way. We can't. And I hope this, this reaches somebody, but I'm going to read from Matthew 25, 14 through 30, the English standard version. And it's the parable of the talents. And it says, for it, for it will be like a man going on a journey who calls his servants and trusts them his property to one. He gave five talents and to another two and to another one to each according to his ability then he went away. He who had received five talents went once and traded with them. And he made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug it in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward bringing five talents more saying master you delivered to me five talents here i have made five talents more his master said it to him well done and good and faithful servant you have been faithful over a little i set you over much enter into the joy of your master and he and he also who had the two talents came forward and saying master you delivered me from two talents here i have made two talents more his master said to him well done and good and faithful servant you have been faithful over a little i will set you over much enter into the joy of their ma of your master he also who had received one talent came forward saying master i knew you to be hard man reaping where you did not sow and gathered where you scattered no seed so i was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have uh, what is yours. But his master answered, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew what I have reaped, and I have not sown and gathered. I scattered no seed. No seed are people. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was my own, my, with my own interest. So take the talent. Um, from him and give it to him that has ten talents for to everyone that has more will be given and he that have abundance from the one that who has not has not even what he has will be taken away and cast worthless servant into outer darkness in that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth so you see that we don't carry what God gives us he'll give it to somebody else and we are accountable so when you want to be face to hit face to him and he said that you didn't help me here you didn't help me there how would you how are you gonna feel like this this is super important we can't be missing this I never under, actually understood what the talents meant I kind of did but he's given me a full revelation of it and it's just not um we are not just called for one thing, like to be a prophet. We are could we could be called be doing many more things. It could be up to even ten things, like he like it says in the Bible. Now I'm going to read from Luke fifteen three through seven, and it reads: Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does not he leave the ninety nine to open? country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it and when he finds it he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says rejoice with me i have found my lost sheep i tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over the 99 righteous person who do not need repentance i hope this word encourages somebody i just felt like the Lord was really speaking to me this morning about this, you know, because to me, I was like, well, Lord, 
if you're call I, I know that you're calling me to something more than this than what you're giving me am I hearing from you wrong because it seems like you're giving me more than one thing to do if it's to give a word if it's to help people with counseling you know to help them get through with the things that they need to get through and you're calling me to more then am I Am I doing, am I hearing you wrong? Because it's more than one thing. But no, he's showing me that those are talents. You can't, you can't store them up and hide them away. You know, you, you know what God is giving you. It, it's just in within you. It's, it, it's a desire. You just have to seek God and ask him to show you what your talents are. But I hope this reaches somebody today. I just felt really strong to do it. It's been on my mind. I, I would have made the video at 2 o'clock in the morning, seriously. But everybody's sleeping. I didn't want to make a ruckus. But, um, yeah, I hope this touches somebody or encourages somebody. But, um, yeah. So, have a blessed day, okay, guys? Shalom. Bye.